Welcome to the channel, I'm James, and today we're looking at DraftKings Inc. ticker symbol DKNG. They have just released earnings and we're going to be going through them right now and then giving my fair value based on discounted free cash flow models and the Buffer Grim intrinsic value should be should you be buying the dip right now. What's happened with DraftKings on the air? It is now at $18.57. The market has reacted very, very poorly. These earnings down 15% in the pre-market. It was down 4% yesterday and is down 62% from its all-time highs at around about $72 a share. So this stock has been dropping like a stone. Is this the right time to buy it? Well, we'll go through that now. Let's have a look at the news here. So basically what's happened is they went down 15% in pre-market trading on Friday after they announced uh, more quarterly losses that widened from a year ago. The revenue rose, but costs have jumped. Net loss widened to 362 million to 242 million. Uh, while per share losses widened from 80 cents to 69 cents. That's not nice at all. And basically everything is down. So what we're going to be doing is going through these numbers. So let's get straight into it. Uh, firstly, we have the revenue. Is revenue up? Yes, 323 million in 19. Uh, basically doubled in 2020 and then doubled again in 2021 to 1.3 billion. So that is good in that respect. Also, just before we go on the next, please give a like on the video and subscribe if you're not. We're going to be doing daily videos bringing out, uh, well, out my uh, fair valuations of stocks based off their earnings. It's going to be pretty fun. Anyway. So what is happening? Well, we've revenue is up, net loss attributed to common stockholders. This would be obviously net income. It's negative. We'll talk about that in a second. Costs are up. Um, net loss is revenue. Take away basically all the expenses. You can see that loss from operations is up massively. Cost of revenue is up. Uh, sales and marketing also up. General and admin also up and everything is up. And what does that mean in terms of the bottom line? Well, it was minus 142 million in 19. 1.2 billion in 2020 and 1.5 billion in 2021. Now in terms of revenue, this is slightly better because you can see here they got 1.3 and now they're about 1.5. So relative to the revenue, it's it's not as bad, but it is still increasing. So they really need to turn this around quickly if this is a buy. And next what we're gonna do is look at the shares outstanding and this is on page 144. So let me just go to that, very big document. Um, and it's not on this page, so that's in case. Let's just type in shares outstanding. Uh, there you go. So you can see they do have, they're issuing more shares quite regularly. Uh, that is a massive, massive increase. 2019, 184 million shares. That went up to 305 million in 2020, and then 402 million in 2021. So they are issuing a lot more shares, which is diluting shareholders already. Obviously, shareholders will not be happy that the stock price is dropping massively, but they're also being diluted in that respect as well. So not a good look once again. Now, as I always say, if they're reinvesting this money, then that is key. But uh, yeah, you don't want to see the shares doubling every two years. That is not good. And then finally, what we're going to do is look at the cash flow statements to get the free cash flow. So let's just get that up now. Statement of cash flows. I can't spell. There it is. And there you go. So how do we get free cash flow? Well, cash from operating activities minus CapEx, in this case, purchases of property and equipment. And a bad story again, minus 46 million, minus 194 million, minus 419. Uh, CapEx is pretty flat around about 16 to 15 million. So that gives a free cash flow of the current year of a roundabout. Let's do the maths in my head. Um, well, minus 403 million. So that is uh, decreasing which is once again not good they don't have long to become a free cash flow generating company so let's just get right into my valuations uh, firstly this is going to be a calculation of free cash flow using sort of estimates you can see this is decreasing all year over year so what does that give us and um, well it breaks the calculation minus 35 the stock went to zero so what i'm going to do is what do we need to do to get it to the actual stock price of um $18 and uh, $18.45 and more. So let's just say if they were to, oh, that's a big increase. For them to be free cash flow positive, they would need to be free cash flow positive in the next year. And then that increasing to about just shy of 850 million in 2025, that would put them fairly valued at the minute. Um, if they went to 60, and this would be them, actually, that's quite a big increase. Sorry, let, let's change it again to 45. To get them over the fair value, with the need but worth about a billion of free cash flow in 2025 and this is steadily increasing and that would be to get to the current share price now but for graham intrinsic value similar story minus earnings per share they're expected to growth at 16.8 percent but with a minus earnings per share it breaks this calculation as well so 
neither model says it's a buy. They need to start generating free cash flow and start being a profitable company. But as we said before, if we go to the um, the the income statement and we look at what is the page, it was page 80. They are definitely trending in the wrong direction here. Um, they need to really, what, they need to double their revenue. Now, revenue has doubling, it has been doubling. Are they going to consistently grow that? Analysts expecting a pretty high growth for this company, but it's just seems too much for me uh one of the thing i wanted to just draw attention to is who owns this stock and who's having a bad day because i did a video on roku yesterday this is rk roku their third largest holding and DraftKings is their 15th so this is going to take a hammering again so i just have a quick look at some technical analysis here uh we are currently at about 18 dollars a share which is well this was a previous low here so let's just mark that out if they actually break below the 17 mark which would be the lowest it's been since the initial run-up of the stock you can see that was at 17 we're currently at 18 for drops below there the next real point of uh, support is at ten dollars a share now i know that would be horrible for some investors but that is where the next line is so it did rebound strongly uh, once it hit that uh, 17 dollars and is now dropping back down it's gone from 22 to 18 dollars a share unfortunately it doesn't market here but you can see that would be round about here is what we'd see uh, on the moving averages, let's just have a look. We're going to say it's going to show that the moving averages are saying that the stock is a sell. Uh, definitely, the technicals are going to be very, very weak on the stock, but you can do it from both sides. What could you have done? Or if you are just a buyer and seller of the stock, not someone who is shorting stocks or anything like that, when could you have realized that this was done? Um, well, say you got in at the absolute peak, the price really started dropping consistently under the Maven move out. Sorry started dropping consistently under the 50-day moving average at back in May and then again but just say you didn't held on to here $52 would have been your exit point there and imagine if you were shortened at that point you could have shorted all the way down the moving averages is saying that as well um, and then if we just quickly look at the MACD I imagine this will be very bearish signs once again uh, well not as not, not what I thought to be honest uh, you can see the positive momentum over, is over here but the MACD and signal line are below zero which is very bearish the last time it was positive was in this good run up here from August where it was at its all-time high and finally RSI relative strength index what is that telling us I'm going to say that this is stock is in very over sold regions on the daily not about much it's kind of a uh, hovering at the minute but we'll see what happens once uh, the market officially opens and then where it goes the next couple of days but if we go to the weekly uh wow that's actually uh, <laughs> i haven't uh, seen an rsi like this now i know the stock's only been around since august 2019 but you can see overbought drop down overbought drop down overbought drop down and consistently dropping as well and this is the lowest it's been in terms of the weekly rsi so technicals i wouldn't touch this stock um fundamentally it's not for me either um i know people are interested in this stock unfortunately for my understanding is i'm english we have pretty uh relaxed betting laws over here i don't know why you would go to DraftKings over another um betting service but that's just me maybe that's me being ignorant as an englishman so please let me know if you would use DraftKings. do you like them as a company in terms of a user and would you buy them as a stock All right guys thanks for watching please give a like if you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys next time